Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kislin. And remember, as usual, if there's any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Our office numbers are 453-2020. That's our Hazleton location, Hazleton Eye Specialist, located on the Beltway in Hazleton and in Stroudsburg. For those of you watching uh, out in the Poconos, our Stroudsburg location, Stroudsburg Eye Specialist on uh, 9th Street in Stroudsburg. Our phone number there is 421-3342. And you can catch us on the web at www.drkislin.com. So again, welcome, thanks for joining us. Um, what we're gonna do uh, at this show and our next show, this is gonna be a two-part series, um, freedom from glasses and contacts. And uh, no better uh, guest to have with us today uh, than probably um, one of the best uh, eye surgeons uh, on the East Coast, if not in the world, uh, Dr. Frank Bucci. Uh, we're coming to you from his, his surgery center in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, the Angelina Teresa Bucci Eye Surgery Center. Uh, Dr. Bucci, thanks for, thanks for joining us and, and helping educate the folks at home about uh, really what's out there now as far as correcting their vision. And, and folks, our theme is gonna be freedom from glasses and contacts and how we can make patients not only see better uh, but see patients clear. So Dr. Bucci, thanks, thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Um, you know, one of the main reasons patients come to us on a daily basis, you know, the, the complaining obviously of their vision being blurry, um, we diagnose them with cataracts. So let's jump right into it for those folks watching at home. Tell the folks what exactly a cataract is because there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of patients feel it's this growth they have on their eye. Um, so clear things up for us, what is a cataract? All right, so we'll start, we'll talk about cataracts and then we'll talk about how that even in a cataract patient can be free of glasses and bifocals. But the cataract actually has some great illustrations here. The eye is actually as, you know, as big as a grape and inside that grape there's a, a structure that's the exact size and shape as a mini M&M and that's something everyone can relate to. And so when we do cataract surgery, we make a tiny wound right here. Not, we don't touch the blood vessels, so there's no bleeding. And I actually do surgery. You don't have to stop your blood thinners, your Coumadin and Warfarins and, and other things. So you don't, you don't have to stop your uh, blood thinners, even aspirin. And so we do a tiny wound here, which is about the size of two thicknesses of a dime a wound. And we go in and we, we take the, the coating of the M&M off. We then break up the, uh, the chocolate with either sound waves or light waves and then uh, we extract that from the eye and then you end up with an empty pouch right here and then the lens which is six millimeters uh, wide goes through a two millimeter wound because it's rolled up like a taco and then uh, we, it, we, it goes in with an inserter and it form fits into this pouch and then the pouch shrink wraps on it and the lens is right there uh, for the rest of your life right where God had the focusing power to start with so it's right back in that same place, replacing what was the lens of the eye that had become cloudy. And that clouding is what now defined it as a cataract. So the cataract was not a, the growth of something new, it was the clouding up of the natural lens that was in the eye uh, in the first place. So the eye's kind of like a camera. That's kind of the analogy I use, right. probably an old time camera, not a digital camera. Right. But light comes in and it goes through the front of the eye, which is the cornea. Right. And then, so that lens of the eye that you were pointing to, that's what has all the refracting or, or power that allows us to see. Focusing stuff. So that lens, again, a lot of patients think it's a growth, but it's not. It's actually a, a yellowing or browning. And, and what causes that cataract? What causes well, that to form? The, the, the natural lens is made up of these special cells. There are these long, elongated cells that are arranged in a in a spe special way by God that allows light to pass through. So it's a solid material, but it's clear. And what happens is as we age, like all the cells in our body, they, they, they lose their exact shape. And as soon as you lose that exact orientation of those special elongated cells, it begins to opacify. And then, and then what any, any opacification within this area is now you would define this as a cataract. And then we monitor your vision. When it begins to st stop letting the light get from outside the eye to the very special, as you said, film of the camera or the retina, when it's, when it's blocking that, then it's when it's time to consider replacing it. And <clears throat> cataract in a lot of cases caused by ultraviolet light or the sun. Correct. That's and, part of it, yep. And 
do we all get cataracts when we live long enough? Because a lot of patients say, well, I'm 65. I didn't think I was going to get cataracts until I was 80. They can happen at all ages. Right. So, yeah, the saying is if you live long enough, you're going to get a cataract. You know, we jokingly say, you know, back in 1925 when, you know, you get run over by a tractor when you're 47, you're not going to get your cataract. But now everybody's at the health club, everybody's using omegas, everybody's cholesterol's lower, you're working out, and the average age is something like 79, uh, 78, 79 uh, lifespan. So you almost can count on that you're gonna get a cataract sooner, sooner or later. Now, when I talk to a patient, I tell them they have cataracts, they need to see you to have their cataract out. A lot of patients get a little nervous about surgery. And um, I, I tell patients it's a pretty straightforward surgery. Um, years ago, we used to say the cataracts had to be ripe. Um, that's not the case anymore. So okay. explain to the folks at home a little bit, you know, how do we make that decision when they're ready for surgery? And talk a little bit about what's, what's involved with the surgery. Is there any pain, discomfort? So, you know, right here in the, in the surgery center here, typical experience. So they don't have to go to a hospital? No. Right? So, and, and if you went to the hospital, you would be, by the time you checked in and time you left would be almost like, like seven hours. Where here, the turnaround is three hours. No needle underneath your eye before surgery, no stitch during surgery, no patch after surgery, no pain during, no pain after, and full activity, in my case, in one day. Most other surgeons, it's one week, but we use a special shelved three-plane wound that's very small that self-seals within a day, so we, you know, we're able to give you full activity in one day. But while you're here also, when you first go in the operating room after you've received your drops and your pupils are dilated, you come into the operating room and in the first minute we give you a little some, some uh, sedation and it's a little bit just to get started in the first minute and we jokingly call that like one martini or one beer. That's the kind of relaxation you'll have. Then about the fourth minute we give you four martinis all at once and you go into that stage where you're kind of half in, half out, maybe more out and you're floating and then we do the surgery at that point in four to six minutes. 90% of the surgeries are done within four to six minutes. And during that four to six minutes, you either are not aware I'm doing the surgery or you're aware and you don't care because you're in kind of happy land. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of patients after they see you, they say, gee, I don't, I don't remember seeing Dr. Bucci. You know, right. when, when did he come in? You know, I woke up and it, and it was over. over. And um, so very comfortable, re relaxing. Um, Folks, that was our, our first segment. That went really quick. Uh, we talked about what a cataract is, a little bit about the surgery. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk about um, the implants that are used now because everybody with cataract surgery needs to have an implant now or else they wouldn't see. We're going to talk about those implants and how we can really make you see without glasses or contacts. So you're watching Eye Care Today and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kissler, and you're watching Eye Care Today. We're coming to you uh, today from uh, Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania, the uh, home of uh, Dr. Bucci's uh, surgery center, the Angelina Teresa Bucci Eye Surgery Center, again, right here in Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. Remember, if there, there's ever any questions, please feel free to contact us. Our Hazelton office, Hazelton Eye Specialist on the Beltway in Hazelton, 453-2020, and Stroudsburg Eye Specialist, uh, 852 North 9th Street in Stroudsburg, 4213342 and on the web, www.drkisslin.com. And again, Dr. Bucci, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, before the break, we were talking to the folks at home about what cataracts are, how simple the surgery is, and I think just to kind of sum it up, and for those just tuning in, um, six to seven minutes, no needle, no stitch, no patch, no pain, uh, no restrictions, um, really, it's not like their mother's cataract surgery was right. many, many years ago. Uh, the term cataracts have to be ripe. We don't talk about that anymore. Basically, is it true that you know when patients aren't seeing the way they, they like to, when we can't make them see better with glasses or contacts anymore, we start thinking about getting the cataracts out? Would you say that's pretty reasonable? Yeah, once this starts blocking the light from coming into your eye, you're having some glare with headlights coming at you, or glare in the sunlight, or glare when you go in the Walmart and you have those fluorescent lights, you know, you know, we used to say ripe because the complication rate 30 years ago was higher and the, the, the surgeon wanted to wait till you lost significant amount of vision because if you had a complication there would be a, you know, a variable comparison there. But now there's no sense of letting somebody walk around with 20, 50, 20, 60 vision when with a four to six minute operation 
with a complication rate of two per thousand, they're going to restore their vision. And now with all the other opportunities of what we're going to talk about, the premium lenses that they can have. And sometimes if you have thick glasses and you get a cataract, it's almost like a blessing in disguise because all cataract surgery has become refractive surgery. Kind of like what you hear LASIK is, you know, surgery to get you out of glasses. For those who are, who are older than 60 or 65 usually have some cataract changes and when they become significant, when the light doesn't get to the retina efficiently, then you can have an implant there that can free you from glasses and actually really improve your quality of life. Uh, you know, for, for those younger than 40, we always talk about LASIK and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll address that uh, in, in the future. Uh, those from 45 to 65 can also have implants even before they have cataracts. And that's another topic we'll address. But sticking with cataracts, um, once we open this, uh, as I referred to, the M&M &M, and we, we, we shell that out, we put an implant in there, it becomes the next question is, which implant do we put there? And we have a lot of choices and we'll try to keep it simple here. But one, you can have a typical, like a generic Medicare lens which is a distance only lens. It's not gonna assist you in reading without glasses, but it's, it'll improve your vision because we take the cataract out and put a clear lens. But you can put a premium distance lens in, which uh, corrects additional things. It's better optics, better technology, kind of like high definition TV compared to regular TV. Uh, it, it fixes something called spherical aberration, which is not fixed by the generic lens. It fixes something like chromatic aberration, which the other lens doesn't fix. You know, these are complex optical things, but it, do, it gives you better quality vision in the distance, no halos at night, and that's an option. You have, to, you have to upgrade, you have to pay for the premium lens out of pocket. So that's one option. Another option, we all have heard of astigmatism. Um, that's when your cornea is shaped more like a football than a basketball. And we put the astigmatism correction in people's glasses outside the eye. Another implant for a patient that has a lot of astigmatism in their cornea is you can put a, what's called a toric lens or an astigmatism correcting intraocular lens that fixes the astigmatism from inside your eye. So when that's in there, it's after surgery you heal up, you have great distance vision because you don't have to wear the glasses to fix the astigmatism, it's already fixed from inside the eye. Now the most popular lens, uh, premium lens, is a multifocal lens and because that can free you completely of glasses. And you know, we're proud to say that you know, the best multifocal in the world, I believe, is the Tectus multifocal. And, and I've implanted more of that lens than any other surgeon in the world. And we've done many studies, and I travel all over the world, uh, teaching and lecturing other doctors as to how to successfully use that lens. And uh, we, we, we can place that lens in there, and that'll give you good distance vision, and also a focal point about 15 inches where you can see literally the phone book if you have a healthy eye. So um, we've done that. We've done more than 5,000 multifocal surgeries. Here's an interesting list I'll give you. Just This is what we call our no bifocal honor roll. And uh, I'm not, you're not here to see the names, but to see how many names. And from all of the places in Northeast Pennsylvania that we work in, Hazleton and Stroudsburg and, and Scranton and, you know, and Pittston or whatever. But so this many people have been happy. The complication rate for an unhappy patient is about one in 300. So you know, there's issues that have to be dealt with with multifocal lenses. But um, we're, we feel that we're an expert uh, facility for that. And it's very powerful for a patient who's worn bifocals for 20 or 30 years that they now can see distance and up close. So our rate is about 98 to 99% of patients who receive two multifocals will have no glasses for the rest of their life. So a lot of information there. Right. Um, <laughs> um, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, patients sitting at home and they say, you know what, I think I need a change in my glasses. You know, I'm not seeing as well as I, as I was. What are some of the symptoms that, that cataracts give us? We, you touched on glare a little bit, but um, glare at night driving. Talk about some of the other symptoms that patients uh, may be sitting at home and haven't had their eyes checked in two or three years, right. and maybe it's not glasses, maybe it's right. something else. That's what, what happens. Symptoms. When the opacification begins and the, and the vision starts to cloud up, the first thing the patient thinks is, I need new glasses. But Tom, Dr. Kissel's right. So, so it, it's, it can be a generalized blurring, it all depends, there's other dynamics in your eye, how big your pupil is and where, how, how you function and what you're trying to do, but it can be just a generalized clouding. Frequently patients, well, they're watching the, the, the football and they say, I used to watch a game, I can still see the game, but they used to score, that little letters up in the corner of TV, 
I used to be able to see them. I can't see them anymore. That's that's because that's picking up some early changes. What used to be called very early changes, but now you can't do that. And and just very uh, you know a generalized clouding. Sometimes the the color vision begins to go, but they don't really notice that till after cataract surgery when we restore the colors. You know, white and blue are some of the colors that you can't see well. You just did a patient of mine a couple of weeks ago, and, and folks, this is kind of funny. She came in the day after surgery, and she looked me in the eye and she said, I'm really mad at you. And I thought, oh no, what happened? She said, for the last six months, I was cleaning the drapes in my house every Friday because I thought they were dirty. Right. And you did the one eye, and she said, I came home, and they were crystal white. Right. And with the other eye, they were brown. So she thought she had dirty drapes right. in the house, and every day she's cleaning them and, and cleaning, but it was just that that cataract causes this slow kind of graying, browning of your vision. Right. So, you know, that's, that's and, folks, that's kind of what happens. And that's key, and Dr. Kisslis brings up a good point that is be, if you begin to feel like you have a little loss of vision, it might be more significant than you really think. I, I tell my patients, it's like you lost nine cents a day for 15 years. You lost a for fortune, but you never noticed it. It was so slow and incremental that you think everything's fine. And then a typical patient, you fix one eye and like the world is different now. It's a great analogy. Um, folks, we're gonna, uh, it's time for another quick break. Uh, when I come back, uh, I wanna talk about how to choose a surgeon. And uh, a lot of, we're gonna touch on a lot of other um, details about the multifocal lenses and, and how we can give you now freedom from glasses and contacts. So uh, again, you're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kissin, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. Again, you're watching Eye Care Today. I'm your host, Dr. Dr. Uh, Thomas Kisslin. Thanks for joining us. Uh, remember, any questions, feel free to give us a call. Our Hazleton location, Hazleton Eye Specialist on the Beltway in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, 453-2020. And our location in Stroudsburg is Stroudsburg Eye Specialist uh, on uh, 9th Street in Stroudsburg, that number 421-3342. Our website is www.drkisslin.com. So feel free if there's any questions, give us a call. You can actually also call uh, Dr. Bucci's office. They have a toll-free number, it's 877-DR-BUCCI, so 877-DR-B-U-C-C-I. We'll put those numbers on the screen for you in case you missed any of them. So uh, again, Dr. Bucci, thanks for, thanks for joining us and, and sharing your expertise with the folks out there. Um, just to review um, the last two segments for anyone just joining us, we've been talking um, really about how to give patients not only better vision but freedom from their glasses and contacts. And you've kind of been a pioneer in this area on being able to give patients um, that freedom uh, via LASIK, which we're gonna talk about in another show, um, multifocal contacts, cater cataract surgery. Um, you know, tell the folks at home, I mean, when choosing a surgeon, um, obviously you want someone who's experienced, who's done a lot, but who has great results. Um, I mean, you're a young guy yet, but how many surgeries have you actually done? I think we're, uh, you know, over 25,000. I think it's actually 26, but in that range as far as intraocular surgeries, uh, not really counting the LASIK. So there's many more, over 10,000 LASIK procedures also. So, folks, that's a, that's a lot of surgery, and there's a lot of expertise that, that uh, goes into that. So, you know, when choosing a surgeon, I think it's important to understand that you, you want someone that has um, the skill set, who has the knowledge, but the other thing I think that you bring to the table is the ability to do research. I mean, we do a lot of research on our end uh, as far as dry eye and some other things, but you're constantly doing research on lenses and, and drops and what medication works better. We were just talking the other night about do we use this drop postoperatively versus this one? Which one's gonna give our patients a better result? Talk to the folks out there why you think that's important. Why, so maybe a surgeon who doesn't do research just does surgery, what's the differentiation there? Well, when I think about the experience over my whole career, the research, not only when you actually study something in detail, you learn about it, you get the experience. If you're putting lens X and lens Y in the eye and then you study the minute differences of what makes a better outcome, you really, by, by, by focusing your attention on it, you actually learn. Then you're invited to present that research at a, at a particular meeting anywhere in the world. We go all over the world and you go and then the, the process of presenting that and interacting with other people, say, in that session who have studied the same things and you learn again. And, then and they don't always agree with you. Right. So it's that banter back and right. forth. Right, and you have to defend your position, they defend their position, and you, again, you have to think about it in more depth. And then after you build a career and maybe you're, you're considered a thought leader, a worldwide thought leader, the people you associate with. 
I mean, I feel privileged that I can go in the room and there's the, you know, some of the top, you know, half a dozen doctors in the room and you start talking about what you're doing, what you're thinking. And the interaction with the top doctors in the world and having that privilege is really where you learn a lot. Where you're with a surgeon who said, you know, I've done, you said I did 26,000 surgeries, but I might be with a doctor who's done 100,000, who's from Singapore, and another doctor from London, and another doctor from San Francisco, and they're really experts in, their, in that particular field too. And to interact with those doctors is a, is a tremendous uh, privilege and experience for learning. Because the meetings we go to, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, it's not just in the U.S. I mean, you know, there's different techniques being used across the world and in other countries that you've been able to bring some of that back into the, into the United States. And go ahead. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. I just thought, you know, what I've learned in Peru, we have a, a, a charity uh, uh, eye institute in Peru where we've done 6,000 free cataract surgeries in the past six years. And, you know, the cataracts that are presented there are so much harder and, you know, because the patients don't have Medicare, don't have opportunity, and the, and the, the, the cataracts get very mature. So this operating on those and the techniques you have to come up with to deal with more challenging cases, then you come back to the United States and the cases seem a little easier and you become more efficient and your complication rate even goes lower because, again, you, you really had to extend your skill set. You had to really extend yourself with these other challenging cases. And then we, we perform a lot of research in Peru too, designing new lasers and, and uh, getting products ready to enter the US market. So sometimes when they come here, there's a new laser out that uses light waves and we've already done a thousand cases in Peru before we've even introduced it into, in, in the United States so far. So that research comes into not only technique, but even like you said, certain uh, machines, certain equipment, certain medications. Um, and that all makes the results better for our patients now. Again, the medications we're able to use now in, uh, on patients um, give them a better result, correct? I mean, the steroids, the anti antibiotics, all those drops are better now than they were, than they were years ago. Right, let me just point out like a tangible idea that we talked about the eye being a camera and we're gonna put a, an excellent lens here, but the front of the eye, the cornea has to be healthy and, and let the light pass through. And so that's like the, you have to have the, the, the lens of the camera in focus. And then you have to know what's the healthy, healthiest thing to do for the retina, because if the, if the film and the camera doesn't work, you don't get a clear picture. So the idea you're pointing to is we're focusing as the eye as a whole and what techniques and medications we can do that will you know, allow the, the retina to function at its optimum and allow the cornea to function at its optimum. And for example, the cornea relates to dry eye and the, the retina would be things like a swelling from diabetic retinopathy or early macular degeneration. If someone had early macular degeneration, we might decide to use a different implant. The multifocal implant demands of the eye that it work at its optimum. And if you were losing health of your, uh, of your retina, for example, early macular degeneration, or you're a diabetic and, you, and we detected swelling, then we might pick a different implant and we could pick various medications that might you know, solve those issues. And, and you know those are those are great points because when a patient um, needs to go for cataract surgery, a lot of the preoperative examination is extremely important because, like you said, we need to make sure the front of the eye, the back of the eye is healthy. And folks, again, like I said, this is going to be a, a two-part show. This is going to be part one. In part two, I'd like to focus. We're going to focus a little bit on the front of the eye, the back of the eye, how maybe we can improve that before surgery because if we don't do that, the patient's not going to see well. Right. And that's that's a very important uh, piece of the puzzle. Um, one thing I want to go back to when we talked a little bit about the research you've done, tell the folks at home, um, once you do the research, um, you have to write it up. Um, it's presented to your colleagues, right. and then it actually gets um, presented in publications, right. which all of us then read um, across the country. I've, you've published, I've published. How many publications have, have you actually had? Well, I think we're up to something like 85 when you add up the uh, peer-reviewed publications and the trade journal publications. So 85 or maybe even more than that, something in that range. And, and that's extremely important, uh, folks, because, you know, again, the things you're learning and, and we're learning, we're passing on to other doctors, making them, you know, achieve better, better outcomes. But, you know, a lot of that initial work is, is done right here in Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania. You wouldn't think of Wilkesboro, Pennsylvania right. as, as having um, that ability, but we're very fortunate um, to have that ability here in a surgery center like this to give our patients that that optimum um, those optimum results. And we, and we you, you've developed a you know national international reputation as far as 
you know, dry eye related to contact lenses and various comp con contact lens complications. And I have a worldwide reputation as far as multifocal lenses and those kind of things. And you even get, even when you don't present a paper, we're asked to give, a, a, I call it an, invi an invited lecture or invited talk, where you have to prepare your thoughts and then present it at a meeting in front of maybe a thousand doctors. And, you know, I've done, you know, somewhere between like 150 or 200 invited, invited lectures, and I know you've done probably a hundred of those yourself. So again, that's that interaction where you really have to be on your game and be on top of the field and you become the one that's teaching the others and they're reading your publications. And that's, a, again, a privileged uh, position to be in because you get the latest from your other colleagues also. And it all comes down to the ability to provide the best care and the best outcomes for our patient. That's, that's why we do this. So right. um, thank you for, for joining us. Um, uh, in the first show, again, just as a reminder, folks, we're going to have a second show coming up. Where we're going to touch on more of these topics, plus talk about LASIK and how we can free you from glasses and contacts. So thanks for joining us. That was a quick half hour. Uh, again, uh, you're watching Eye Care Today. Uh, I was joined today by uh, world-renowned Dr. Bucci. I'm your host, Dr. Thomas Kislin, and we'll see you next time on Eye Care Today.